Hey friends, Steve Guttenberg here. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and today it's all about summertime views, views of your systems, vintage systems, new systems, home theater, desktop, headphones. It's all here, panel speakers, horns, lots of really cool horns, lots of cool tubes. Anyway, I, I requested pictures. You guys responded with the best set ever. So much, I broke it up into two parts. So today is part one. A day after tomorrow, we will see part two. But for now, let's just see what you got. Jorge sent in this incredible photograph. Those are B&W Nautilus speakers. You've probably never seen them in real life. I only saw them once, I think, in real life. What an amazing speaker. And he found them in his family's storage room. I'm sure it's a long story. But anyway, he found them, but he didn't find the crossover because there was a separate crossover for those speakers. So we had to have B&W make a new crossover for these speakers. So that's that's a great way to start this story. And then the those Mark Levinson amplifiers, 333s is the model number. There's three of them sitting there, but actually he uses four because he's bi-amping the speakers and the fourth one is out for service. He also has a Cambridge Audio Azure 851N streamer preamplifier and he's using a Mac Mini to serve up the tunes. Oh. Charles had tried before to get a picture in these slideshows of mine, and this time he's done it. First of all, he's got a lot of shit. He has the Freya preamplifier, Freya Plus, and he's running it with new old stock tubes from GE, RCA, Sylvania, Raytheon, CBS, and some other stuff. There's also a Manny Phono preamp, a Bifrost multi-bit DAC, Shit Ajir power amplifiers, the monos, a Raspberry Pi, all kinds of good stuff. A wired for sound USB reclocker, the speakers. Oh, the speakers, you're wondering about that because I am. The GR Research X static open baffles. And for subs, he's using Polk Audio PSW505s. David lives in Charleston, West Virginia. What an image. Wow. Thank you for that. So the speakers are Paragon Audio Jubilee, and he's using them with the Jubilee extension modules. I assume that's for more bass. The analog front end is a JA Michelle gyro deck with a SME 309 tone arm. And there's a Benz Ebony medium output cartridge. Electronics include Aesthetic Rhea Signature Phono Stage, Audible Illusions Modulus 3A, and Mark Levinson dual monaural power amplifier. It's a number 331. Another stunning picture from Peter. He lives in Stockholm, Sweden. He's running at home theater. He made the, the media bench himself with an oak plank. It's all kinds of cool stuff. There's an XTZ amplifier and Lynn speakers. But the picture, wow, I want to live there. Jose lives in Guadalajara, Mexico, and his entire system costs $1,850. He's running a Peachtree Nova integrated amp that he got for $650. The turntable looks like a Project RPM, but it's not. It was made by an engineer in Mexico City. Uh, there's a cool DAC. The speakers, I do know those. Those are ELAC Debut F6.2s. Those cost $550. Headphones are Philips Fidelios, and he's using a MacBook Pro to serve up tunes via Tidal. Kirby has a set of Lipinski L707 speakers. Those are pro monitors, but a lot of consumers use them. The amp is a Hegel Roost, or Roust. Phono preamp is a PS Audio Stellar. Turntable is a Riga Planer 3 with a cartridge. Oh, the cartridge is a Denon DL103. That's classic. It's got room treatment by GIK Acoustics. All good stuff. I'm sure it sounds amazing. Next comes Mikhail. He's 48 years old. He lives in Denmark with his three-year-old son. His speakers, these are classic. Electrovoice TS940DLX. They're active speakers being driven over with 15-inch woofer and a compression driver. So much. <laughs> so much is there. Subwoofers or a Limke Micro Wrecker tapped horns with 15-inch woofers. I think that's what it means. The source is a music library served on a NAS drive. Preamp DAC is by Blue Cheese Audio. It's the Roquefort. I, 
I think he's pulling my leg there. And the digital crossover is a Lactica XP3060. Scott is in his mid-30s. He lives in San Francisco with his wife, Clarissa. And he has, a, he has a vintage setup with an unusual choice of speakers. Congratulations, Bose 401 Series 2. I don't remember those at all. The amplifier is a Pioneer SX636. And get this, it was originally purchased by his grandfather as a gift for his father's graduation from college. That's very cool. And the turntable is a PL120 Pioneer. Now, Ellum tells me he was skeptical. He was skeptical about the Audiophiliac Daily Show, but he is now a believer. I won him over, so thank you for that. Thanks for the, for the vote of confidence. For the speakers, he's running Klipsch Heresy 2s with an SVS PB12 subwoofer. The DAC is a Cord Cutest. The Yamaha amp is a S1100, and he also has, for some reason, uh, a Yamaha Receiver RX A2050. Oh, for the Klipsch center and surround speakers. And he's running Odyssey Sign headphones. Yale has a, well, there's a lot going on here with Yale's system. He has a Voice of Music integrated tube amplifier. And he has Alltech Model 14 speakers and a Thorin's 124 turntable. Okay, so far so good. Then there's a DJ setup with a Cadessa mixer a Gates CB11 turntable, a Rusco Mark V turntable, Fairchild, that's got to be cool, 255 monoblock amps, uh, the Fisher 300 amp, and for ancillary speakers, there's a 1950s era Alltech monitors that his wife wants out of the house, ASAP. Here we have Clyde's system, and he said, in regards to my request for room treatments, he sent this, and this is pretty cool. It's a painting. It's on the uh, left side of the image there. It's a painting called Carrie Forest by Susan Hood. It's 55 inches wide, 35 inches high, and 3 inches thick. The front canvas looks like a forest, but it has vertical slits. And then there's a second canvas behind that one that's painted sky blue, and it also has vertical slits. And then there's a third level to it with sound-absorbing felt. Sean has a tidy system. He's running Ariston RD11 turntable with a Dynavector DRT-XV cartridge. There's also a Lab LCR Mark III phono preamp, a Cambridge Audio DAC Magic 100. There's a Dell i7 MacTop with J River Exposure 2010S2 integrated amp. The speakers they look familiar. Those are B&W Nautilus 805s. Those speakers, they look familiar. I had Maggie's that looked exactly like those. Those are Maggie 3.7i's in Ferrari Red, which he claims is no longer available, that finish. And the power amp, that is very serious, those are Krell FPB 250 monoblocks. The preamp is a Macintosh C2600. There's a REL T9i subwoofer, a Marantz CD6005 CD player, and a Furman Elite 15 DMI power conditioner. Just to include a couple of pictures, and I felt like I just had to run them both, so I combined them into one image. So he has two headphones in that shot with the headphones. The one is an HD800, that's a Sennheiser, and then the head, the HEDD phone, is a folded ribbon headphone. Very cool. I reviewed it a few months ago. As for the desktop system, he's running the ever-popular Kef LS50s, powered by a Peachtree Nova 150. Tom's system, there's a lot going on there. I'm going to do my best to cover as much as I can. But the, he has two turntables and probably a microphone. The one is a Technics SL1100 direct drive turntable with a Supex SD900 tone arm. The other table is a Thorin's TD-124 with a Rekka cut 120 12-inch arm. He's got a bunch of cartridges, a GE RPX, a Shure M3D, an Ortofon SPU, and a Denon DL-103. The phono preamp is the original Lehman Audio Black Cube. But he's also got a Conrad Johnson PV-1 uh, preamplifier and a Sony S9000 ES CD player 
and a Macintosh MR55 tuner, and a Dynaco ST70 with New World Stock tubes. This is, there's a lot going on there. Uh, the speakers, by the way, are a hybrid of Klipsch Eminence drivers in old Heathkit cabinets. Um, there's Almaco horns. Yeah, all good stuff. I'm sure it sounds freaking amazing. Randy's uh, moving up in the world. He has Vandersteen Quattro speakers, a VPI turntable, a Bryston CD3 player, a uh, Newman T1 streamer DAC, Audio Research LS15 preamp, Esoteric Audio Research 834 phono preamp, a PS Audio power generator, regenerator, and a Bryston 4B SST2 power amp. This concludes part one of the Summertime Views images, your images shown here on the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Thank you to everyone who took the time to take pictures and send them in to me. I truly appreciate it. If yours wasn't in this first round, come back in two days for part two of Summertime Views and maybe yours will show up there. There, there were so many great ones, so many. The quality level just, you guys outdid yourself with, with these images. So. Thanks to everyone. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Thank you so much for being here day after day. Uh, if you dig it, please subscribe. If you don't dig it that much, eh, don't subscribe. It's okay. I can handle it. If you dig it, though, please give me a thumbs up every now and then. I keep forgetting to ask you guys to do that, and I hear it's important in terms of the YouTube algorithm. With that, I can say uh, my work here is at last complete. I really do hope to see you back here again, actually in two days, to see the rest of summertime views. Bye-bye.